stream started. Is it though? Yeah. Are you sure? I hope so. Hmm. Now our lighting is sufficient. Yes. So you may be, in fact, missing the Codlops presentation right now. I'm not sure exactly when it is running. Yeah. But I think it already leaked, because that seems to happen a lot lately. I can't actually remember the last announcement that didn't leak. Oh, jeez. I'm playing back to myself. I'm going to turn off sound on the stream before I go insane, because yeah. Roger already showed me a video that illustrates how you go insane when you have to listen to yourself, play back to yourself in delay time. It confuses yeah, your brain, I, makes it melt. Every it's time you say something, you just like stop talking because you're hearing yeah. yourself and like you just speak in broken sentences. Yeah, especially when everyone else is talking at the same time while they're also talking to you. So then you... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. It's too much, too much of the brain to handle. It's a Lovecraft team. Man, I hope we're not missing the cod blobs thing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a shame, because I'm very excited about Call of Duty TM, sponsored by Mountain Dew. And, you know, Doritos. It's not, not my thing. Hey, bros. Hey, paisanos. It's the Super Mario. Sorry. It's the Super Dude, the Mario, Mario Dude. Super Show. Swing, uh, oh, um, from side to side. <laughs> what? From the yeah. Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Oh, I never watched that. That is what doing the Mario one. is. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I ever watched that. Roger well, is not aware of how to do okay. the Mario, except ah. if you enter okay. the wrong thing. Google as images. much as this lighting is kind of nice, it's blinding <laughs> me. <laughs> Blinded by, by the light. light. So, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Artificial Fun episode 8. Um, and today we don't have Matt again. We've decided to change the way that we're doing the, um, we've done the layout. So Chris has just put down our, uh, us as just players, rather than um, yeah. our names. Just so it basically makes it easier for us to bring in guests. Um, we're hopefully going to be bringing in some friends, other friends, other than like, you know, us three every single week to talk about games. Um, but uh, yeah, you're stuck with us again this week. It's been, again, a really slow week, although we are counting down the days, um, or not the days, I guess, um, the. Uh, not far weeks, off. Um, to E3. So um, yeah, we're not far off from that at all. Um, and how long is it till that? I think it's in June. Um, it's always in June. So June the yeah. 10th. 10th, okay. Right, um, so yeah, that's uh, a thing that's going to be really, really big. That's going to be lots and lots of news going out there. But this week we have had some, 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 some pretty big news, um, even though there's not been a lot of it. So first thing... If I can actually get this up, where is Chris's docket? Okay, so we've lost Chris. Oh no. Um, <laughs> and we've got Lunk just sitting there. Oh, <laughs> that was an angry face. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, while Chris is trying to get back on, um, in fact, I'll just. Yeah, while Chris is trying to get back on, um, the uh, topics we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so first of all, and the obvious thing, is going to be Valve um, and Steam's mod monetization. Oh yeah. Um, and on behalf of Matt, we're going to, well, I'm definitely going to be showing a little bit of um, hatred towards that. Um, yeah. As, as much as I, as, as much as I like it for the, the the people creating the mods, and I think they deserve something, I also like as a consumer just don't want to be overpaying for some little mod. Well, the argument, one of the arguments I was going to make is that um, Valve isn't paying the modders nearly enough. That's true too. Valve's taking like seventy five percent of the profit on that. Like that, and like the modders, but just... the modders really should be taking the lion's share because they're doing yeah. all of the work. 
Okay, so that means we've lost Chris completely. And yep. now Cameron, your aspect ratio is now spanning across both his screen oh, and your screen. Really? Well, it oh, was a little bit before. before. Uh, that's really irritating. Okay, right. Let's try and get Chris back in. Well, yeah, yeah this, this is, is really yeah, odd. We'll, we'll probably have to cut the video here in the YouTube videos. <laughs> um, <laughs> add people to call. Chris, add to call. Okay, you're back into your box again. Let's see if we can get Chris. A plus, hey, top stream. There he is. Okay, there we go. Me. So. Oh, the screen. connection hasn't Please. changed. It's taking a while. Me and Cameron have been oh, talking, so... Uh, Weird. <laughs> so, okay, our connection was fine. Because I, I could hear and see Cameron, and then you stopped being able to be talked to. Yeah. So, something's going on. So, anyway... Powered by Let's Skype. Let's play Skype. Powered by Skype, yeah. So, um, first things first, obviously, so it'll be the Valve. Um, Steam mod monetization. Next thing is Total Warhammer. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, so Warhammer Actually, is a Total War game, which yeah. would be really, really interesting. So go on. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's called Total War Warhammer. Total War Warhammer, okay, fine. Um, so but Warhammer, Total Warhammer is catchy. War, yeah, so Total Warhammer War, is getting a Total War game, uh, which is really, really cool, so we'll be talking about that a little bit. Silent Hill may be cancelled. Uh, um, yeah. So that's um, we're going to be talking about that um, and and something to do with wait is that anything to do with the Del Toro thing? Yep. Yes. 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 Okay. Cool. It was him who said it apparently. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. According to Del Toro, that Silent Hill may be cancelled. Yeah. And we'll probably be talking a little bit about the Apple Watch, about all the hype that's been going on, um, about some of the games that are also come, be coming out on it. Um, and the first main game that's probably been bringing it brought out on it, which is called WayForward um, Watch Quest. So well, WayForward are the developers. Uh -huh. The game's called Watch Quest. You don't, you don't, you don't write this down in the docket. What? <laughs> Should have written. Well, down. because I was gonna. Well, I mean, I thought I was gonna introduce. Oh, you were gonna. Really? Yeah. You got to You got to earn that right. Done it a few times. Oh, fine. I'm gonna work my way up to the Speaker of the House. Um. We'll also discuss a little bit about how video game pre-orders are dropping in Britain. Um, and also a new character has been unveiled, I guess, in Pokken tournaments. So we'll discuss that. And we've got some... People play that? Well, I'm really looking forward to the game coming to the West, so... yeah. Some people play Tekken? Um, Somewhere? Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Shall, we get, so shall we get started with... Um, the Valve thing, and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to, if I fire the links, oh, if, you, if you guys can actually put the links into the Twitch chat, yeah, and I will get them up, and so people can actually, I'll put it over all of our faces, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I nominate Cameron, because I can't remember my Twitch login. Sure. Well, Cameron, I think, is already on the Twitch chat, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just need to open Slack, so I can do that. Um, so... Okay, I got it. Right. Oh, it's on the police mm -hmm. alert. Um, News so Um, okay, cool. So, um, Steam charging for mods. Uh, first thoughts. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing you guys have already read um, or and heard a bit about yep, it. Yep, I have engaged with this particular debate, and I sort of know the uh, general goings on with that. Yep. So, do you want to enlighten us on that then? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, uh, 
Well, Where to start with this one? I've already read pretty much everything about it. So. Uh, um, okay, so this week, Valve unleashed a surprise feature on Steam, whereby uh, modders can sell mods on the Steam Workshop for prices that they set. Um, and out of this, I believe most of the percentage goes between the original game creator and to Valve, and a small portion goes to the modders who only are paid after a certain amount of money is reached. Uh, quite a fair bit, actually, I think. It's, um, I think, five hundred dollars. Mm. It's more than that, I think. I'll just check very quickly. So, Steam monetization modders. How much money? I think it was a fair bit, which was another reason people weren't too happy. Seventy-five. Okay, I can't find it immediately, but it's a fair bit. So it'd be safe to say that a lot of modders would have to have a lot of mods hang on, downloaded. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, uh, I keep on forgetting every single week to put my headphones in, uh, so all of that was going to be really echoey. Uh, I am sorry, guys. It's fine. So, I didn't hear any echoing, so okay, that's good. Yeah, I didn't hear any echoing, so well, you might have out. You won't hear it until I've actually, I'm uploading the video to YouTube, oh. so then there's a button, a button on echoing. Okay, right, carry on. <laughs> okay, so um, the situation. So Valve are letting modders charge for mods on Steam, and they they and the original game creators are. It seems they took it down already, though. Um, if they're not, they're definitely working on it. Um, I haven't followed what's been going on today, but basically, people were more than a little upset about this for a number of very good reasons. And um, Gabe Newell himself actually jumped into a Reddit AMA the other okay. day mm -hmm. and to answer a few questions to people. And that of this being the internet didn't make anyone too much happier um, considering the situation. But they did clear a few things up at least and also open up the possibility that they might want to go back on this if it doesn't work out, which it doesn't seem like it might um, considering the backlash. So... Yeah. Yeah, a, um, a so, point to be made in just just a point to be made in general, not in anybody's favour or or anything. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it, it just because modders can set prices to their mods doesn't mean they have to set mod prices to their mods. So um, modders yeah, can they still keep them free. totally free. The idea, I yes. mean, so the idea of the four argument is that it's been free, but it's only ever been free. And now modders are getting can potentially get paid for it. So I understand the argument where the modders should be getting more money, and I am totally agreeing with that. Like I think it's ridiculous that seventy five percent of all the money goes to the original content creator and Valve. Um, I think it should be at least something like forty five percent of the you know the money, the lion's share of the money should be going to the modder because they've done all the work. Um, it's way too sharp. Yeah, there's uh, that. But however, they wouldn't be making any money on it anyway if Valve hadn't brought the um, this in. So it's the idea yeah. of like they're at least getting the opportunity, but the opportunity's not being given in a fair way. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm gonna sorry. So go. I, I'm just gonna really quickly run a quick sort of for and against. So just showing both sides, and then we can sort of go into opinions. Uh, personally on how it's going on and what we feel they should do or shouldn't do um, so right four mods four mods being monetized mm -hmm. so Valve's standpoint that they've sort of outlined through um, sort of interviews and the reddit AMA and other places is they believe that by circulating sort of circulating the money around the community they can up the incentive to produce quality mods and justify the modders using their time because good mods do take a lot of time to do yeah. mm -hmm. um, and make that worthwhile for them 
and theoretically that means that people can take out the time to produce more quality content and feel that they're getting something out of it. Um, and that is the sort of main spur behind that. There's not too many other pluses, to be honest, uh, on that. Uh, but that's the that's the main thrust. Well, uh, so another, the, the another, against another no another four. Oh yeah, um, was that um, uh, a lot of people? Um, it also will dis- it can distinguish between it will allow people to distinguish between um, higher quality mods versus lower quality mods. People who tend who will be tending to sell their mods for higher prices, they will tend to be. Probably have putting a lot put in unless they're trolling or something. They'll probably yeah. I, that's fight. not necessarily true. And that's what yeah, I'm that's, worried about. That's about a this. for and an against at the same time because that sort of leads into the against, which no, is what? that there is no. Sorry, I, sorry, sorry I just wanted to finish. Uh, the, the main reason, yeah. the main point, what I was trying to say is that people are yeah. more likely to wanting to build higher quality mods because there's the. Incentive. That's true too. Yeah. Whereas before uh, they may have. And they may have shied away and just said, "Well, why don't I just make my own game, or why don't I yeah. make an indie dev, or you know, indie game with a small team or something?" Uh, now yeah. they're more likely to say, "Well, at least what they're trying, maybe what Valve is trying to get people to do, is say, hey, there's already a modding, you know, system out there. Why don't we start yeah. doing high quality mods and get paid for it?" Yeah, I mean, I agree. That's that's a theory, and that's the thing about the whole. Um, that's the thing about the whole situation. Is a lot of a lot of what people are worried about for and against depends a lot on theory and future and slippery slopes yeah. and all sorts of things that are very difficult to predict until they happen. Until you do but, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the against section is obviously, it could lead to a slippery slope where all modders feel the need to remain competitive with each other and make money so they all make their mods paid and what previously was a very community driven um mm-hmm. passion driven scene becomes something that is driven by monetization there's also no agreed upon sort of market for mods so it's going to there's going to be a difficult you know um situation where no one's really sure where they stand in terms of business and marketing and pricing and it's all going to be a little bit awkward and backlashy for everyone uh, there's already been a lot of backlash for a lot of modders who are sort of making the decision on how much they want to go in with this and um, how the people who are fans of their mods feel about that and feel about their opinions and whether whether or not they're being entitled or not to feel that yeah. you know they should get mods for free and whether the modders are feeling entitled that they should be paid for something that should be uh, driven by their own personal passion for the game itself it's a very you know it's a very tricky argument and also um even though the theory is that um monetization will produce better stuff because if someone puts money into something or is getting money for something they'll do a better job um conversely it also means there's less of an incentive as long as they get something for it i uh, that sort of goes into opinion but yeah, I'll get onto that a bit later. Ah, oh. uh, video disappeared. Come on. Skype. Saying, please try a little later. Hmm. Let's come Is on. that for everyone? No, oh. it's come back again. Yeah, it should work uh, now. Okay. Well, that yeah, was weird. Carry on. I lost my train of thought. Okay, so, uh, yeah, against... Same. Okay, so against um, it could split, divide the modding community, make, make things very awkward for everything, and monetize what was previously a uh, very sort of free, um, creativity driven thing. And also, a lot of the, as Raji pointed out, a lot of the cut is going to the original creators, even though, like, they did make the original game. It's a tricky question as to how much they're well, entitled to if no, they didn't make the mod. So, this is where I wanted to make a, a, a point. Um, which is basically something I've been thinking about. Now, um, mm-hmm. in the in the games industry, you have a multitude of um, small um, multiplayer online games, um, MOBAs, and so on and so forth. People trying to make knockoffs of different games and making their own versions. Reason being, um, for a lot of this, a lot of the time, is because. Um, to increase longevity of a game, 
um, and to get more sales over a longer period of time, you get people to buy a game. Then you give, then you sell them DLC. You sell them new weapons, new um, uh, new things within the game, uh, microtransactions. Uh, you can get them to pay for server costs or whatever, they, de you know, depending on whether they're playing it online all the time and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And with the larger games, like the AAA games that are for single player, they sell them in such high bulk and such high volumes that they don't need to have. Yeah, um, that's uh, so very good point. It's not going to do much to support a smaller game because the amount of numbers required to make it worthwhile for both the modder and the company... Um, rely on a larger game. The thing that it's been brought out with first as a sort of test has been Skyrim, which isn't even an online game. It doesn't have an infrastructure that needs to be supported well, the point by continuing was, money. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so the point that I was going to make was that yeah. um, the reason why a lot of these... I mean, a lot of these bigger games which are going to get most of the attention when it comes to people modding them, they've, they've bought... They, they, they've made the game. They've most likely become profitable. Now, any money on top of that, they weren't even... that It wasn't within their intentions to be making that money for extra DLC that they didn't produce. Mm. This would be like saying that a company um, who's building the DLC and then sells the DLC has to give a cut to someone... At, like, has to give a cut to someone else every single time, even though yeah. they're not the ones that... Even though they're the ones that fully produced it. Um, and it would, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, like I don't know if it even if it happens, but I don't know. It's like going to a custom car workshop and having some changes made to your car, and then the workshop and you have to pay money to whoever made the car. Yeah, yeah. For changing yeah. their car, you know. Exactly. The only thing it's like they haven't, you know, you paid the money, you put it down, and then yeah, it, it's yeah. you know within their framework, it's, but it's your own, it's sense. your own effort. Yeah. yeah. The only thing Tar in that situation is you lose your warranty. But other than that, yeah. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> to argue against the well, whole uh, so. monetization makes for higher quality mods thing. Sure. Has that ever worked for mobile games? <sighs> Gotta say no. It's it not just the, for the it, big ones. For the it has allowed to have some sort of filtration because a little bit. Generally, people won't be selling things. Um, if they aren't of a certain quality, and generally, also there's there's two filters that work with it, work side by side with that. It's price, and then also um, amount of sales. So if you have something that is has a, has a price, then in, it's indic then that you will it, it will have sales, and then obviously if yeah. something's been bought more than something else, then you know that it's just gonna one's gonna sink to the bottom and one's gonna rise to the top. So. That's true. It does sort yeah. itself in that way, which is good. Um, but it also heavily encourages like low-priced, mass-produced garbage. Yeah, it. Put, some people are worrying that it might lead to a sort of app store situation that yeah. has to be sorted Chris out. Made a point um, earlier. Well, Chris yeah. made a point earlier, which was basically I don't know if this was his point. This was your point or not? But basically, the idea that um, having paid for mods may reduce creativity. Because could, people yeah. are more likely to just be doing things because now they can make money. So if they can make a quick buck and just yeah. put things free, out there, free markets yeah. doesn't guarantee. And also, like, that's yeah. already started to happen, which is um, people are rip, are um, pirating other people's. Yeah, yeah, and that's that was the other thing I was going to get onto. That's a big policing like sort that issue to sort out. That it's going to be really, really. Uh, Tricky for anyone, arguably not really worth anyone's time <clears throat> policing. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, what I think is they need to just have a few systems in place for one to control price to say like if if it's like not selling or something, it should force the price down, even if the person's like an idiot and doesn't want to, mm -hmm. because people will be idiots about selling their things online. That's yeah. guaranteed. Also, something to keep piracy away in this case, so that people aren't just like taking somebody else's mod and also selling it or giving it away for cheaper. Yeah, so, so that's the for and the against. Um, 
in terms of that, so I kind of lost my train of thought in what I was going to say. Um, oh yeah, in, in terms of the monetization, um, I don't think. I what I think they should do mm-hmm. is not have it as default. A lot of people have been pushing Valve to replace the system or to add to the system a donation button so that if people want to pay, they can. And that money should also go entirely to the modder or they should be able to choose. So stuff like the Humble Bundle and other gaming sort of thing websites, they let you choose how much of the money goes to developers, how much goes to charity, how much goes to the store, Etc. Yeah. That, that's an interesting, quite neat system. Yeah, a famous thing that happened quite recently in recent years was um, the THQ bundle, humble bundle. Uh, before yeah. they went out, before they went bankrupt, um, a lot of people mm. chose to give a lot of the money to THQ directly because um, they were dying. Because they were dying, and people wanted to yeah. keep them alive. And I think that's something that I think that is a testament to why people should be allowed to choose to give it to the modders directly if they want to because it's the idea that people want to keep alive the things that are most precious and keeping the creativity of the community alive um, is an incredibly precious thing which you do not want to uh, yeah. you, know, you don't want to segregate um, community from the game uh, yeah. if, if I respect the modders work and I know that donating to them means that they won't even see a sense of it until a certain milestone which may or may not be pretty unlikely for them then what's the point? You know? Yeah, it's like those it's charities when you know that most of it's going into admin and you know corrupt. It should seriously be the other corruption. way around, where like the creator gets all of it until a certain point, like how yeah, like, Unreal Engine is doing it yeah, now. Like, like Unreal yeah. Engine is doing. That would be a yeah, way better way to do it. So until they get to a thousand dollars or something, because really, and this is my this is my. My point, and I know it sounds like maybe because I mean, from a business standpoint, I can understand why you would want it this way. But no, it just, doesn't. <laughs> but no, but from as, in terms of just making yeah, I no, no, I can't, making no, a I quick buck, yeah, yeah, I can't even, I can't even defend that. But the idea is, is that like these companies are multi-million, sometimes I mean, Valve's case, multi-billion-dollar companies. These modders, they literally are getting paid. We're talking about, we're talking about. Okay, a top mod, we're talking about no more than, say, $4.50, maybe $5, we're talking about maximum $10, and if they're making a 25% cut on that, they're making maximum $2.50 on each on each sale. And $2.50, I mean, you can't even buy a meal for that. Um, which it potentially adds up, though, it, but it there's a lot of theory... It potentially adds, adds up, but to a multi-billion dollar company... Yeah. What are you going to do with five hundred dollars yeah, or like six hundred dollars? Well, I mean, it doesn't. The the thing about that is that the the theory is it will build up to the same level as say the TF2 workshop or whatever else, which is another thing. Valve already sell mods for money because for years now, Valve has been taking community items in TF2 and Dota and probably some other games as well, I think maybe CSGO, and they implement them into the actual game as official items that are vetted by Valve and the original creators, and they do maps as well, a lot of custom maps in TF2 updates and whatever have been community maps that have been buffed up to official status and released as part of the patch, so they load it into everyone's um, client. And the original modders get a cut, and it's been pretty reasonable. A lot of them are making a lot of money off people buying their items yeah. as part of the game. And there was nothing wrong with that system. That was a good system. People could feel good about it. And, you know, I think the issue is that, you know, you either officially vet something or you don't, and it just becomes a weird sort of unofficial DLC because that's another problem is people don't want modding to turn into just another kind of DLC that would be yeah. honestly really sad I mean that, that, that's, that's, yeah. this, this brings us loops us back around to that point of the pirating um, is that um, at this point um, in the game uh, yeah. you've got a valve who are taking a how much percentage cut I think it's a um, really reasonable I think they're taking I think... a 35% cut or something like that 
Yeah, I think between Valve and the game publisher, it's something like 75%. It's, it's yeah. 75% for both between them. Pretty chunky. But let's yeah. just say this is probably going to be something like 40 or 35% for Valve. Um, mm. They are taking that cut and they're not doing... At the moment, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. They're not even vetting them. And people are getting, well, they, getting they... away with pirating other people's mods mm. and selling them. Uh, it, that's not that... You can't... Okay, I can somewhat understand the original publishers getting some of the money for allowing people to mod their things. Okay, fine, whatever, give them some of the money. Valve is hosting it, give them some of the money, sure. But if you're not doing anything beyond that, then the the, the lion's share, like I said originally, should be going to the modder. Um, Agreed. And the service yeah. that you, unless unless Valve are specifically providing a really high quality service which demands them to be able to take a, li a largest cut. Because if they are if they are vetting everything, if they are making other, if they are making sure that the people who are um, selling rather than just giving away free, but selling their mods um, are giving high quality content that are, is um, thoughtful and has you know has relevance to the game and it's something that people want. Um, that they're doing, you know, proper vetting of all of the mods, then fine, fair enough, take a little bit more. But still, the lion's share should be going to the, to the modder. Um, yeah, that that's another thing people are worried about as well, in terms of what's in the mod as well, is not only, like, is a lot of stuff, you know, people don't have an excuse to use it, because any mod is going to use any collection of, you know, fonts and other models and animations that other people might have been used. A lot of mods are Frankensteins. It's very few mods where they're in uh, oh. Stop. Come on, Skype. Come on, Come Skype. On. Come on. Come on. Please. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep clicking on my video call while yeah, I talk. Uh, so, uh, Carry on, yeah. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, so uh, your average mod is a bit of a Frankenstein. Um, there's going to be a lot of different people's stuff in that. Here we go. Splitting that informally is going to be... Uh, you know, its own challenge. Uh, not only that, but there's the other slippery slope of there's a lot of mods that are almost required because the nature of the, uh, the PC market is that it's no secret a lot of companies don't put the proper time and QC into porting to PC. So a lot of games have issues which were then fixed by modders and this was almost to the point where, for some games, this is like taken as granted that you will use several mods to keep it running properly and supported on PC. Yeah. And this isn't to you know just make it look prettier or add new content. This is to make it run adequately. Uh, so people are worried about you know a thing where, uh, for example, they're trying to monetize Sky UI, which is a mod for Skyrim that makes mm. that gives it a much better interface that's actually configured for PC. Because they directly ported over the console UI for the game, which no one liked at all. They said it made it it was very hard to get around and put too much load on the game and all sorts of things. It just was a lazy job. And stuff yeah. like Dark Souls. Imagine if for Dark Souls you had to pay for the controller fix and you had to pay for the FPS cap unlocker and you had to pay for the widescreen fix. That yeah. would be abysmal. You know. That would encourage companies to let modders fix the game for them, and then they, the company would get paid for the people's effort in fixing their own mistakes. And that but the thing is, then it's not a situation you want to reach. And you you'll, you'll also get a situation where the people would have an incentive to want to sell it rather than give it away free because they would mm -hmm. be making so much money from those mods. Yeah. I mean, like a mod, a simple mod, like not simple, but I mean a mod that was made. Was it Resident Evil, Resident Evil Five or something, where people were modding the co the co-op? Um, yeah, the people thing. modded co-op back into the game. Yeah. People modded co-op back into Resident Evil Revelations too yeah. before Capcom actually. So this is uh, the sort of thing uh, that could that people could definitely exploit very it's, very easily. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, that's a nice, possibly, segue to Silent Hill. Um, Silent Hills. Silent Hills. Um, yeah, Silent Hills. May be cancelled according to Graham, uh, I can't never Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo. 
Um, Guy, Guy Elmo. I'll just call him Del Toro. Uh, I haven't actually read too much into this, so... You, I mean, yeah, so, uh, Benicio Del Toro is not very happy. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, this kind of goes back a bit because it ties into the whole ongoing saga of is Kojima fired or isn't he? No one knows. Yeah. Um... In the meantime, he's being sued by a doctor, and that's also a really, really long story that I don't quite entirely know. I might touch on that later if there's any time at all. It's a very, very long story. But, um, yeah, so Kojima may or may not be fired from Konami after a falling out with the management, which no one suspected because he was sort of their star child. Yeah, he's their poster boy. So something must have seriously went down for them to drop him. And or they're planning to continue left on his own. Or he, yeah, or he just left on his own for whatever reason. Uh, but um, according to sort of everything they were talking about afterwards, he would he's still going to finish Metal Gear Solid Five, which will be his last major game with Konami. And there was no mention of Silent Hills, which was his big collaboration and production with Guillermo del Toro and Konami. Um, the thing also uses the Fox engine, which is Kojima Studios' own engine that they developed for um, Ground Zeroes and Silent Hills and Metal Gear Solid 5 other games. I think maybe uh, Pro Evolution Soccer might use it as well. That still exists, by the way. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they removed all traces of that engine and the logo of the engine from the Silent Hills website recently, which got people worried. And now, finally, um, there's a tweet, and we're obviously going to sort and staff tweets aren't official confirmation most of the time. But um, oh, sure. um, but the tweet was retweeted by um, Guillermo del Toro's assistant, which gives it some heft. And apparently he said, uh, let's take a look. It's not going to happen, and that breaks my greasy heart. So, um, and this was at the SF uh, Science Fiction Film Fest. Haven't heard of that one before. But uh, yeah, so Silent Hills may not be happening. It's not an official confirmation, but it's not looking too good, and that's a shame because um, Silent Hills... uh, Silent Hills is a sort of franchise that deserved to turn around as much as anything, and it was being headed by exactly the sort of people who were probably, you know, who seemed as poised as anyone to do that. And it's yeah, it's a real shame to see another big franchise sort of go out of nowhere for no real good reason. All right, good crash. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> so that's that's sort of had a reason, but. So just um, so just as a little side note to what Chris said earlier, yep. um, so I think Cameron's just posted the link up on the Twitch chat. I'll go, I'll be, again, I'll be posting that uh, link in the description below. Which which link? So the latest link that I just uh, the posted Forbes on one. Slack. Oh, uh, this head, this uh, doctor um, suing Kojima. So basically, um, a head transplant doctor is oh, considering yeah. suing Kojima of and Konami um, for using his likeness in their upcoming game Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Um, basically, um, someone in um, uh, people in NeoGaf noticed this, um, and other people have noticed this. Basically where one of the doctors in um, Metal Gear Solid Five looks surprisingly uh, similar to this guy. And in fact, what I'll do is just so that you guys can have a look, it actually does look quite similar. Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen that I mean, comparison. It's, it's, it's the guy's fault for looking like a generic old guy, creepy doctor. Yeah, and so, also the fact that the game and the, uh, the sort of publicity ARG that they're doing that's an alternate reality game, so that's any sort of thing where a marketers go in for a big sort of mystery hunt prior yeah. to the release of something to get you know get the fans all excited. And Metal Gear Solid Five has probably one of the most elaborate, <laughs> in-depth ones yet, where they can't tell if a published article about real-life head transplants might be related to Metal Gear Solid Five or not. Um, the Doctor doesn't seem to think so. Um, and that's the thing as well is the weird coincidence is that this is a doctor involved with talking about head transplants and in the game a major potential theme of the game 
is head transplants being done by a doctor who looks like this. <laughs> yeah. So it might be a weird coincidence where Kojima was like, oh, head transplants are neat. He went on Google, this guy popped up, and then he was like, we'll make it look like him. Or he's in on it, or who even knows? It's, you know, it's all a big mystery, and only Kojima knows what's going on. So, uh, so that's a little side That's funny. Kind yeah. Of funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kojima's not having a good time right now. Um, yeah. So, uh, what was the next topic that we wanted to talk about? Um, Warhammer? Uh, yeah, I thought I'd leave the floor to you on that one, as the total war dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see if I can get... Like, I just think it's nice they remembered that Warhammer exists, yeah. and not just Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Um, so, I, don't actually, I haven't actually read too many of the details based on this um, announcement. Um, no. We saw the cinematic but, trailer, but obviously yeah. no game, no gameplay in that. So yeah, no, the cinema, cinema. So um, actually, what we'll do is, um, camera, can you quickly get the cinematic trailer of it up and uh, post that into the Twitch chat, and I'll obviously post that into Slack as well, so that I can post it later on. Uh, well, there's no way. Uh, well, well, maybe chat, we can. Maybe so we, we can just watch it. Okay, maybe just yeah, watch yeah, it on the see, stream. Yeah, just I'll, watch I'll, it. I'll put it. I'll put it up now. I'll put it up. Have a little live reaction going. Sure. Okay. So well, slight, um, slightly delayed because I'm watching myself. <laughs> slight, slight. Um, How long is the delay on this chat anyway? It's normally uh, around about 20, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that. Oh. It is 13 seconds or something right now. Hmm. Wonder if there's any way to screen share it and be in sync and on, yeah, on no. the uh, stream at the same time. <laughs> Just about melt my brain. Almighty Sigma, savior of the Empire. Oh, here we go. Give me strength. For though I dedicated my on. life to eradicating it, it feeds. It grows, devouring all. There must be a final answer to halt its advance. But the tide of war seems endless. Last of the greenskins, the twisted ambitions of the undead. And though the brave dwarven kingdoms stand with us, truly, what hope is it? Against countless horrors that cannot be named, let alone fought by mortal means. And yet all this is nothing before what is to come. It whispers and roars in the dark. It is against us. It is. It is unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I see it now. The beasts that will devour the world.
No, I just logged in on I just logged in on Facebook. Oh. Yeah. So that's the total war war hammer. Yeah. Yep, and there's the greater demon of the Zinch, the Lord of Change. That is pretty cool. So but. one reason why I'm pretty excited about this, um, mm -hmm. is back when I was younger, um, I've had I had many opportunities to get into Warhammer. Um but due to the uh, fact that they were super have, expensive, you would have to spend a lot of money buying the models, um, a lot of money if you wanted to, which is something I was really interested to in doing, which I might actually still get into, is um, the painting um, mm -hmm. in terms of buying the right paints, the right you know equip the you know right brushes, all those little things. It became obviously it's a big hobby, um, but the thing is that it was quite an expensive hobby. Uh, it was something I've always wanted to get into, and it was something I said to one of my friends, um, Chris Barnes, uh, way back when, um, and saying that I would love to have had a total, when I was playing Rome Total War, um, that I would have loved to have that as Warhammer. And <laughs> this is actually uh, been a long time uh, uh, hope um, and wish for me. It was something I kind of forgot about for a very long time, but I'm but when Chris showed me this the other day, uh, Chris Wilson here, um, oh no, there, sorry. Um, yeah, really, really excited. I don't know anything about the law, um, so I'm a noob when it comes to the law, I'm a noob when it comes to anything to do with Warhammer. Um, I've got the Warhammer 40k, um, some of the games in my Steam library, which I have yet to play. Um, but I am really, really looking forward to playing some Total War Warhammer. Uh, on my PC, um, that's going to be really, really interesting. Um, I just really, really, really hope that they don't make it as easy to play as uh, Rome Total War 2, which was a real letdown. So that's the only thing that I really hope that they don't make that sort of uh, thing again. Um, but otherwise I'm really excited for it. Um, I can't really say much on the thing, it's just literally, be, uh, on the game it's actually just, it's just literally been announced. Um, what we uh, what we know about it um, is as much as I think that although Chris you may have more information because you tend to always have more information about these things um, yeah I used to play Warhammer back in the day and I know a little bit about the lore um, it's pretty interesting I Wait, actually there, was there, never is there any spoiler alert thing in terms of the law. Nah, it's not that kind of series. There's no, there's law. There's not really a story sure. or an ongoing story. It's more of a setting. So there's no, you know, there, there's nothing really spoilery going on. Okay. Um, that guy is being corrupted by a by Tzinch, who's one of the Chaos Gods, and uh, he's the Lord of Change. And his deal is like scheming and manipulating and being really, uh, you know, really digging his claws into people. So, I guess that'll be might be part of the political element, sort of manipulating people and using creepy chaos old god powers to make people do what you want without fighting, and you know. So it's interesting that they're giving him the uh, giving him the spotlight because the chaos god they normally go with is Corn, who is the who pretty much what he sounds like. He's the one who's all about hitting people with big flaming swords, and he's the easiest one to. You know, he's the easiest god to of, of chaos to do stuff for because it's all just big spikes and be people in armor, so they don't have to muck around too much with complicated designs. Um, I think it's, inter it's an interesting direction for Total War as a series as well because this is the first Total War that's actually affiliated with a completely different franchise, and it's a fantasy one as well. So it's sort of, um, it's sort of you know taking a step in a different direction, possibly opening up the gateway to all sorts of different yeah. sort of crossovers within the system. So you could have Total War, you know, Game of Thrones Total would War, make Lord them Rings. would make them mega bucks, Lord of the that Rings, would. you know, these are there's already mods for this sort of thing. Yeah. But if there was like an official one, then it would, you know, it it would rake it in. No question. Yeah. Um I mean even and, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. I think it would be really cool. I mean, the one thing that I love about Total War is the obvious 
this is going to sound really obvious, but it is this. Um, I oh, are you serious? I don't even care anymore. Um, so the uh, the idea of uh, being able to manage settlements, manage um, your entire um, what your populace and your what Skype, Skype premium. Now it says you need Skype premium to make a group video call. Um, this is what it's still allowing us to do. Wait, what? Yeah, it's not allowing us now at all. Oh, wow. Geez. So this may be them trying to... This live stream is sponsored by Skype. No, it's not sponsored by Premium. Skype. Premium. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, uh, That's why the serious? artificial fun logo looks like do, Skype. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're getting back at us. Uh, do you it does. Think, yeah, yeah. Do you think like you that it. they may be changing their, their um, policies right yeah. as we're speaking? <laughs> I can see Chris, but he's all really yeah, dark, and so am I. Yeah. This is really oh, yeah, odd. Yeah, I'm grayed out. Where okay. did the sun go? Microsoft. Um, well, that's yeah. really irritating. Um, we may have to. Well, we can that. replace ourselves with fuzzy Yoshi's and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think and I think I, might, I think I might have to do that right now. So I'm just going to replace Chris before um, with, with something else um, for now. Yeah. I'm still there, aren't I? No, you're not. You're gone. Completely. I can see myself on the stream all dark. Yeah, you've yeah. gone now. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, then. Well, first, actually, let me just finish my point before, we, before I go and find um, okay. placeholders for you two. Uh, hey. Yeah. So, um... Uh, what was my point? Oh, yeah. So, no. Oh, gosh darn it. Um, Total War would be really cool to do with other stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, one cool, yeah. really, really cool thing is that you're, 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 you know, you're keeping track of your own, your own populace, your own factions, your own, pop, you know, um, cities or whatever it is. Um, and being able to bring in um, other um, worlds and universes into this um, system um, will be really, really cool to see how lore plays out um, in different mm -hmm. um, settings. So, um, so something like uh, Lord of the Rings, being able to um, re-engage people with um, some of his other works, like within the Silmarillion, um, you know, Lo the Lost Tales, and so on and so forth. Um, it would be pretty cool to see some of these missions played out. And the thing is, the brilliant thing about it is, is because you have this sort of you are God feel to the world, where you are you are you know putting the troops in different places, you are working politically, you're working um, in terms of managing everything. Um, it's not as sort of uh, boring as if it was just a single player game working through these different these different parts. You're you're watching yep. over things happen over six month periods. Uh, year periods, so you can see things uh, speed up significantly, um, yeah. and how watch how things play out. So it's better for for um, uh, for stories that have a lot of law and a lot of background Pol uh, history, politics, politics and history. Even something I don't know if this is too, going too far, but things like um, seeing the political nature of Star Wars. Yeah, you could do something. You know, you could set it in space and just have a different, uh, have like a galaxy map. You know, um, because the politics in Star Wars, I don't know if anybody's. You ever can still do planetary that. battles. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. you just have a different map style. Um, there's a ton of politics in Star Wars, though. Yeah, there's yeah. a ton of po politics in Star Wars, and that's why I, I was thinking maybe that could be interesting as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that would um, be. Very yeah, totally. I think Game of Thrones would be a perfect fit. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. That um, like has to happen. Yeah, because they made Game of Thrones strategy games, but they weren't very good. They need they need someone like Total War handling it to make it yeah. any good. Right. So let's let's um. Hold on, so don't say anything, by the way, guys, because I've removed you from the chat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Cameron, you're Squidward. Okay. Okay, Cameron, you're back in. Yay! Um, 
then Chris, you are back in as well. Yay! Cool. Um, I'm Squidward, I'm Squidward, I'm Squidward, Squidward, Squidward. Upset Elfman dot JPEG. <laughs> I should change it to CDI link. Yes. Oh geez. Wait, why? What's the blue Yoshi for? Oh, that's over top of Squidward. Okay. Yeah. At some point, we did that. You were a Yoshi, amiibo. Sure. Blue was, Bull Yoshi Amiibo, nice. It was a little bit ago, um, but yeah, you are now both Yoshis. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm cool with that. The next topic. Oh, I have to keep that open, don't I? Total Warp, Total Hammer War, Total yeah. Hammer War. Total Hammer War, yeah. Um, let's just get this up again. So the next topic, and probably the last main one, which is Apple Watch got released um, for people to buy this week, um, which has taken the yeah. world by storm. They have sold, I think they have recorded 3 million units, which has netted them something like $2 yep. billion dollars in revenue or something. Yeah, um, in which is good because Apple's revenues, oof, they were really, you know, yeah, they, they was in huge trouble. <laughs> struggling to make those ends meet. Um, but what has been cool has been that there has been a string of people starting to build um, games. Um, uh, so, Cameron, I think I've sent you sent the link, the Verge link, um, on the Slack. If you can post that. The Verge. Cameron. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, cool. yep, he's, he's on it. I will also take a look at this picture. Best Apple Watch games. Here we go. It is um, now yeah. got a link in, okay. in the thing. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's um... Well, I guess the watch sellers, the watch strap sellers, can make a you that know corner hand, a niche market. That woman or man's hand is pretty big, though. I mean, like I don't think they could fit in any yeah. watches at all, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's. Look, look, yeah, that's a bit. Of, uh, that, her hand is so disgusting. Sorry. Um, <laughs> she shouldn't become a hand model. That's for sure. Okay. Right. Um, for people with normal wrists, I think the Apple Watch will fit you fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, they've been coming out with some games, um, which I, which we posted the link in, um, but one thing I've been thinking about, like, these games, I've been looking at some of these games, and they look interesting, but I'm wondering more, will anybody actually play games on their watch? Um, I don't I know. I understand the the, the, the value of, of notifications, I understand the value of, you know, um, uh, all those sort of things, possibly, you know, uh, it's obviously the time and the date and all that sort of stuff, um, alarms and so on, but, um, but games? Depends on the game, I think. Like, I think there's a market for it, maybe, but depends yeah. on what it is. Check the chat. Chat. Oh, the Twitch chat. Um, which yeah, which chat? Uh, Twitch well, chat. Put it, put it in Red slide. chat, blue chat. Um, you. Know, by the way, if you guys want to post anything to me, then you have to post it through Slack. The reason. Oh, yeah, oh okay. by the way, I think I didn't clarify this before. I might have clarified this before. The reason why I can't interact with anybody on the Twitch chat is because as soon as I open the ch Twitch chat to start streaming, oh, yeah, and yeah, streaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm streaming um, my uh, internet basically just dies and I can't upload I can't upload anymore 
So, um, sure. if anybody's talking to me, uh, I can't see who you're talking well, to. This, this really is sorry. sore for everyone. But yeah, here, here's Apple's latest smartwatch. Yeah. So this is the this is the latest smartwatch. As you can see, it's um, they they they're working alongside um, they're working alongside Nintendo. Um, in, in a surprise degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. This is I amazing. Need, I need to I need to just screen um, screen cap that. So um, this is the new uh, Apple Watch. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, obviously. Um, as you can see, you've got um, the uh, home button here. You've got the back button here. This opens new apps, uh, and this is a light up button because obviously it's using a um, a non light up screen. Um, and it's uh, all powered by the most advanced battery technology available, so lithium ion yeah, but lithium. cells. Yeah. Or um, cells. Yeah. So yeah. Button cells. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I haven't used one. Uh, if you press that button, then it delays Zelda Wii U. <laughs> it, it, has a, it adds a countdown to the side of the watch, which adds the amount of time to the, uh, to the, to the Wii U. Yeah, so that's not the Apple Watch. Um, one thing that to, one thing to say... Oh, let me get rid of that. Uh, one thing to say, which is pretty... Why are you not going... There you go. Uh, one thing to say, which is quite interesting, is a lot of YouTubers have been reviewing the Apple Watch. Sorry, this is going completely away from the gaming thing, but um, uh, and uh, uh, they have been commenting on the um, the ten thousand dollar watch, um, and people have seen it. Some people have seen it on display, and so forth, so on and so forth, and um, it's been described as looking quite cheap. Um, that doesn't bode well, um, especially seeing as the stainless steel and the aluminum one. So the aluminum one's the cheapest one, which is the sports sports edition. Then you have the normal Apple Watch standard, um, which is the stainless steel, and they look and um, I think they look beautiful. Um, but the people are basically saying like with the because obviously the the bands are really easy to to change out and change in. So. I would be curious to see how many people actually want to go for um, would would want to go for the aluminum body sports edition or the chrome um, uh, chromed out um, stainless steel um, uh, standard Apple Watch um, and just change out your bands and see whether you want something more more fancy in that realm. Um, but I'll I'll be like I'd, I'd like to see if anybody actually goes ahead and buys the ten thousand dollar watch and what that actually does, um, uh, what it actually what it actually looks like in person. I haven't seen it myself, so yeah. Although it is significantly, this is something to say: is it is the watch is significantly lighter and significantly smaller than its count than its count its Android counterparts like um, the LG G Watch and the LG G Watch R. Um, so putting that out there as well. So apparently it's more comfortable as well. Um, but that's got nothing to do with games. Um, there's not really a lot to say uh, regarding games. Uh, there is a game called Rules, which I think already people have already had on iOS for a while, and people wanted to see that coming out beforehand. There mm -hmm. is the game uh, which is Watch This Home Run, which is a batting game where you basically. Uh, have to hit the ball um, by tapping on the screen, and it basically allows you to, you know, work on your accuracy or whatever. There's uh, something called Watch Quest. Yep, that's a way forward sort of mini game RPG thing, which is based in the Shantae franchise, which is just came out on Steam the other week, actually, uh, the latest one. And that's sort of them getting in on that uh, early release money. So uh, good for them. They need it. Yeah, for sure. They make, make good games. It's, um, it's cool because um, a lot of these games um, are really, really heavily utilising the, um, the cross-communication um, of your iPhone to your iWatch. Uh, your iWatch. Mm. Your Apple Watch, sorry. Um, I'm gonna get Why don't they call it iWatch? Well, yeah. it, because it's not part of the the iOS family. Why not? Should just be like it 
Well, I think it's because it can yeah. technically it connects to everything. After. Yeah, silly. And so it's not really an I. Although, because it's my Mac. Yeah. But then, but then you have a MacBook Pro. I don't know. Let it just. It should yeah, just I call don't... it an iWatch. I don't. Know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm quite sure. So <laughs> Apple Watch. Um, but yeah, no. So, uh, but it's um, but Watch Quest is is heavily integrated between your iPhone and your watch. Um, and it looks like it's going to be set to be, a, you know, quite a good game. So if you guys are going to get an, um, an Apple Watch, I would suggest getting that as a game if you want to play an RPG. Um, there's Spy Watch, which is more like you act like a secret agent. Um, <laughs> sure. So it's... Um, oh, yeah. I'll just add as a side note that they have already made a skin that turns your watch into the watch from GoldenEye. So yeah, just saying. Is, I think that is the Spy Watch. I think that yeah, I think that Maybe. is the spy watch. Yeah, um, it basically allows you to feel like you're an actual spy. Um, it gives you all these fancy like figures from, and like, numbers all over the screen and and um, things. So yeah, um, and then there's Rune Blade, which I'm not uh, uh, doesn't look amazing, but it's another RPG. Uh, probably something I've heard of it. Watch Quest, uh, but that's another one in the link, so you can guys yeah. can check that out. Um, so yeah, Apple Watch and gaming looks like it may be interesting. Um, so we'll keep an eye on Could that. Could be, and um, let you guys know. Um, would you yeah. guys? Sorry, I, I don't know. I asked it quite earlier. I can't remember. Would you guys play games on your on your watch? I would not have an iPod oh, or an Apple have... Watch. Well, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't really watch. need any, one. Any smart watch, just not not even an iWatch, or would would it have know. to have uh, extra functionality before you would I, think of I, playing? I probably. I might like dip in useful. out of curiosity if I ever had one, but I'd have to have one. The only kind of wearable sort of watch, like wrist device, I'd want for my phone is some kind of NFC device where. Uh, it can unlock your phone just by, like, holding it near your wrist. Yeah. Or also, like, if like, you're just holding it in that hand, then it's automatically going to yeah. unlock. Yeah. Also, like, it's hard to tell until people have had more experience with it, but it seems like it'd be a bit awkward playing with something attached to your wrists. It's something yeah, to. Could be. Yeah, yeah, something I mean, like, if I'm like, if I'm like, if I'm not not like like this. But I'm saying if I'm just like leaning my hand on my desk and I look down at my watch and then there's like an RPG or or like something on there and I just I'm a little bored or something I just flick that and I'm just tapping my wrist. I mean, yeah, but for like any sustained like period, I mean, mm. I I know the sort of games you're going to play on the watch, you wouldn't be playing for a sustained period anyway, most likely. But that's part of the problem for me is I, I like games that you play for sustained periods. Well, yeah, I would, we're, I would yeah, kind of my thing. I would totally play 2048 on a watch like that. Yeah, so something quite something quite straightforward yeah, like that. That'd be actually quite good. Yeah. 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 Or if you had some sort of thing where you don't have to interact with the watch so much, but there's a sort of uh, macro game thing going on, like the whole zomb zombies thing, or whatever that on the uh, you know what I mean, I zombie actually, exercise. I think people, if, if you if you take away the idea of holding your wrist like this all the time to do anything with it, and you realise that when most people look at their watches, they don't do this all the time. Um, they just look at their wrist while leaning it against their leg or on top of their yeah. desk or whatever. You, it, uh, for like, certain periods of time, you could be playing like small mini games and stuff like that. Yeah, it, like yeah. does. In fact, sorry, sorry, just brainwave or whatever. If Nintendo did something like a WarioWare thing, like mini games on your on your on your Apple Watch, like little mini it's, games, like, I could really, see it. Really entertaining. Yeah. It's one button. Yeah, yeah like, like one button you could do, you could, or something. You could rip like off like rhythm. You could rip off rhythm heaven or you know, yeah. Anything I like that. I really wouldn't want to do a rhythm thing on there. I think it's like too small of a thing. Or you could really do like do it. it's a touch screen, isn't it? So you could instead of having a button you could press, you could have a tap, tap to yeah. the beat, or whatever. But it, anyway, there's you can do a lot with that. There's definitely thing room is. for them to make games. The thing is, you yeah. tap and you've like covered up the screen. No, yeah. it's not like that actually. If you if you go go to a, I would suggest go to a um, go to a store at some point, maybe, maybe Best Buy or whatever, um, and um, go and check out a any um, whether it's an Apple Watch or any other smartwatch. 
you'll find that you're not actually covering your screen if you're just tapping it. And the amount of, for the, the length of time that you're having your finger on the screen, it's not really obstructing your view that much. Because you're literally, it's like there for a split second. Hmm. You're not going to be able, you know, it's... Yeah, I guess. Unless your fingers are as big as the person on that image or picture. Uh, oh, geez. You, you may have a problem, but, you know. I think at that point that, you know, your Apple yeah. Watch is the least of your worries. You may have to worry about other things like, you know, dying of obesity or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the Apple Watch and games on it so far. Um, uh, did we have any other topics that we wanted to go over? Video game pre-orders. I think that was about everything. The video games pre-orders were sort of a, a backup topic because yeah. it's a uh, quite a, it's quite a broad thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, just um, obviously, this is something that's. I mean, people have been seeing. I think there's been a few articles on this recently, uh, mm. but uh, video game pre-ordering has um, is getting uh, rarer and rarer um, over the last um, year or so. A year or so, over the last 12 months, 20% uh, less people um, in the are, UK in the UK are pre-ordering games yeah. um, now. So, which um, which is good for Keep Tracker because yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if honestly, I think if you're pre-ordering a game, what's the point of tracking it? Because yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good for us. It's kind of a yeah, also, I, so I'd like to just do a public service announcement. Um, okay. uh, Pre-ordering games is now redundant, and you shouldn't be doing this anymore because if you use Keep Tracker, you can wait until the game comes out, and then we can give you a reduced price on that. Because can we? what we'll be doing, yeah, uh, when, 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 when we set it up, no, when we set it up, because obviously you're not going to be able to buy the games anyway through us, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but and when and when we set it up, we the percentage that we get as a kickback, um, as a commission, we will be giving as a kickback to all of our users. So anybody who buys games through us will be earning credits, which they'll be able to p use to buy games later down the road. Um, so if you first time I've heard of that. I've t we've talked about this. Definitely not. Yeah, yeah we have. Um, so. I will, yeah, we'll we'll talk more about this in the future, and I'll probably explain this in other videos and so on and so forth. But this yeah. is a feature that will be in the final. Well, yeah, episode. I think the main message is that if you do make game purchases through us, then we want to find, then we're working on actively finding a way to pass the savings back to you. However, we do that. So. Um, yeah, I I think there's some fine things in the uh, terms of use of Amazon stuff. We can work but, yeah. around it. Yeah. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's cool. These are the um, challenges we face. So yeah, but pre-ordering is going down, and I think everyone should support it and you know stop pre-ordering games. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So it's a waste of money. It really is. It really is, yep. especially nowadays when you have games which are really, really not doing very well on release with bugs and so on and so forth. I mean. Yeah. Um, if you've seen some of the recent releases from Ubisoft, <clears throat> um, you uh, would probably know that uh, pre-ordering games is not good. Uh, another two other games, which you know, pre-ordering games is not a good thing for. Destiny, far too much hype, and ended up not being as big or good as it was meant to be. Although it has gotten quite popular still. Um, and the other one, which was Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs got huge hype. Um, and ended up being a total. I, I want to say. Yeah, the, the the problem with Watch Dogs is that it was a critical and user disappointment for quite a lot of people, but it was definitely not a sales disappointment. It was a huge success. Well, it, but the, the, the reason so, why um, is because of the pre orders. Because people yeah. like, pre ordered the hell out of it. And the thing is with, um, with, with games like Watch Dogs is that they, uh, you end up, you pre-order these games, you want to get these games when they come out, because obviously you want to be first. Yeah, there's a lot of marketing hype. Um, the idea is with, um, with, with games like that, is that 
um, they over promised so much and again this is just plugging keep tracker if you go on keep tracker you're tracking the game so as soon as the game comes out you don't have to worry about it being released and you not knowing about it it will be released we will notify you the day before and on the day or however much or however before you set much, it yeah however much you want to set it you can set it for 24 days beforehand if you wanted to or even two weeks um, and if you want to carry it, if you want to pre-order it then, then pre-order it then. Or you can wait for the day of the release and then buy it on Amazon or whatever for the price that it is then. Um, but I would suggest that in today's climate, at least in the current climate, the way that game publishers are going with releasing games um, way in advance of fi fixing all their bugs and so on and so forth, I would really urge gamers to just hold out on pre-ordering games um, and, but join communities such as ours, Keep like Keep Tracker, um, where we are going to be, you know, talking about the hype and getting hype about games and tracking that game uh, without having to spend any money. So um, that's you know that's my plug for the day. I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that is going to be all we can fit in for today's session. Agreed. Um, so, just to finish um, off uh, for today, so you don't have to listen to my voice anymore, um, obviously, as usual, um, for my YouTubers out there, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment down below if you, your feelings are more complicated than this or this, um, and you want to start some discussion. Um, obviously, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, that's going to be in the links below. We'll put all the links for this video in the links, in the comment, in the, um, not comment section, in the description below as well. Check out KeepTracker.com if you want to track all the latest games that are coming out um, and you want to discover any new video games in the industry. Um, and we will catch you guys next week um, yep. at 6 o'clock GMT. Yep, and hopefully there will be more news and that will be a... Hopefully, um, although we, we can't promise anything yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, thanks guys. We will make the news. Oops. Yes. Yeah, we will. We will be in the news next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me and my two little Yoshi. Little woolly yes. Yoshis. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See you guys. <laughs> yeah.